Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cat's Track. We post an interview with an amazing Canadian each weekday for your daily inspiration. Today, I would like to introduce you to my friend, Miller Smith. Miller was born and raised in Calgary. He is married to Jennifer, and they have three amazing kids, aged 8, 10, and 12, a very busy household. Miller has a work passion in helping cancer patients get really rehabilitated in a faster fashion and preventing kids with deformities such as cleft lip, palate, or craniofacial syndromes from slipping through the cracks in the system. He's such a good human. Besides his family, Miller's life passion is learning how to sail. French will find his full bio attached. Miller, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks for the kind introduction. Oh, I'm sure there's much more than that, but that's what we could do for today. <laughs> Thank you again. May we start with the questions that I sent you earlier? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so the first one is seems to be the toughest one uh, that we've all had to face and endure. And the first one for you is, what has been your greatest challenge in the last two months? So I'd probably say work challenge-wise, um, I wear two hats. So the main one is an owner and operator of a small business here in Calgary. Uh, being a surgeon, I work out of the hospital. And as you know, with this pandemic, it affects all healthcare workers. So um, through that, uh, our first biggest challenge was when we were mandated to be closed as a clinic trying to sort out what to do with 40 staff. So um, negotiating those challenges and kind of navigating the new landscape. Uh, fortunately, there's been a lot of governmental programs that were put forth, but not a lot of information right off the bat. So everyone wants to know what's happening. And as a business owner, you wanna give them that. And unfortunately, we could tell that things were gonna come, but uh, we didn't know when, we didn't know how much, and uh, when you've otherwise laid off your whole staff, it's trying to sort out, you know, A, where, where can you make ends meet, and B, where can you at least uh, support whatever staff that you have, even though from our standpoint, we have pretty much little to no income, just because we were private practice. So that was the first challenge uh, locally, and then Nationally, I wear the hat of being uh, president-elect of our national organization. So from that standpoint, we were right in the midst of uh, evolving a communication strategy and social media campaign to all our members. And through that, it was trying to sort out how to disseminate information about the pandemic, especially when we're dealing with the mouth and the face, that's where the virus lies. And um, there's a lot of confusing information out there coming from China, Italy, US, UK, and all these other, you know, uh, countries that have been affected far worse than fortunately here in Canada. Um, but it's trying to sort out what is the most important information to disseminate to the members. And then amongst that, trying to distill why there's such a wide discrepancy amongst the provinces. So each province, the regulations are completely different um, and that varies uh, just based on how to go back to work, what uh, you're allowed to do at work versus what you're not allowed to do and working with our uh, provincial members in trying to distill um, what we can as a national uh, entity to try and educate our members as best as possible and help them uh, get back to work themselves. Uh, those, are, those, those are probably the two biggest challenges. And then I, I'd probably say less of a challenge for us because my kids are a bit older was trying to sort out the school at home. They've actually taken a big liking to doing Zoom and stuff like that. So uh, that actually made it very easy. And the first two weeks of the pandemic, I was actually scheduled to be on vacation anyway. So it was a good reprieve. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that the kids have adjusted so well. I've heard that that's not all possible. So. <laughs> yeah, most, most of our friends are not in that same situation. I think our kids just know how to get out of each other's hair and they've, they've championed it as best as they can. That's awesome to hear. Glad to hear that. And what are your top three things that you'd like to share with the audience today? 
top three things about this pandemic? Um, not necessarily. This is your show. Uh, top three. I would say number one is we are back to work right now. So um, getting as many of our staff back to work even though we're not fully functional, fortunately, we've been able to uh, utilize some of the programs out there to help bring back more workers, just so that we're supporting them. Uh, number two is just trying to service our patients. So throughout the, the entire pandemic, not knowing when the end is gonna be, and we still don't know when the end is gonna be, um, just knowing that uh, we can at least communicate to patients that we can see them, uh, for things other than emergencies right now. And I'd probably say my third top three is just helping support other surgeons that I know are going through it far, far worse. So I have several friends that still practice in the States right in the midst of it all in New York and in Michigan and just uh, communicating with them and starting out, you know, how best to make them safe. So when we found that certain products um, were not available to them, it's trying to help support them. Um, and similarly, now that we're back to work, everyone's having a problem of not being able to find their own PPE for healthcare. Um, we've been fortunate because we were able to source a lot before everything went down or, or became uh, very um, uh, dwindled in stock everywhere. And we've been also working with a couple really good pioneering Calgarians that are trying to help, whether it be dental clinics or, you know, allied health clinics uh, trying to sort out their own PPE. So um, I guess reaching out or shouting out to them, it's helpingalberta.ca or helpingalberta.com. Uh, they've taken in quite a few donations and as such, they've also sorted out how to source things for all sorts of clinics that are having real struggles through that right now. Oh, that's excellent. Good. Sounds like you have quite a community that you're supporting. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm part of the community. I, I, I do definitely support it. I'm in no means um, heavily involved in them. It's just more knowing people and knowing that other people are putting the time and effort into helping support everyone else. And connecting them. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And the final question is, do you have a good news or legacy story that you'd like to share? Um, that one I was really struggling with when you sent it to me, and I, I think um, the good news parts of things would be simply to, that everyone in my life has been happy and healthy, and um, uh, no one has become ill or succumbed to this very unknown disease. Um, I, I think the good news is that most people that I know and that I'm surrounded around are healthy and have been otherwise safe and pretty trivial things like uh, having to put a lot of travel aside. So I had several trips planned for this past year, being able to, you know, push them off and not have to worry about refunds or, or uh, uh, re full reimbursements, knowing that you know, I could defer those travels maybe for a year or two years has been really important for us, especially as a family, being able to go and travel and see different parts of the world, but we know it's not safe right now. So it's just sorting out when the best time might be to do that. Whereas I know some people don't always get those opportunities, so. Oh, you're right, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us today, Miller. I really appreciate it. Love your perspective. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for having me and uh, enjoy the weather outside. We don't always get to celebrate in uh, such splendor for a long weekend in Calgary. So. You're so right. Thank you. Awesome. And everybody, that was Dr. Miller Smith. And our next episode of Cat's Track is tomorrow. So look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for joining us. Perfect. Thank you very much.